Good evening and welcome to the Wakefield School Committee meeting of Tuesday, August 13th, 2019. I'd like to call the meeting to order and start with our Pledge of Allegiance, please. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'll, uh, as we always do, I'll start with our mission statement. Uh, the vision of the Wakefield Public Schools is to graduate students who are confident, lifelong learners who are respectful and caring members of their community. Our mission is to prepare students for college, career, and community by prov providing rich and challenging curriculum, high quality instruction, and educational experiences that meet their individual needs and interests. Uh, anybody here from the public who wishes to make a comment? Seeing none. I uh, like a motion for our consent agenda, please. I move that the school committee approve the minutes of the July 23rd, 2019 school committee meeting and accept the minutes of the July 30th, 2019 school committee, uh, school committee policy and communication subcommittee meeting as presented. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any comment? All those in favor? Be unanimous. Um, budget items. Uh, Mike is on vacation, but he did send uh, forward all of his reports. Uh, the only note that I have to make is that they uh, you know, they have yet to encumber all of the uh, salaries and whatnot for the year, so the, the reports look very, very glowing at the moment. So, <laughs> so uh, any questions or comments for, for Doug? Okay. Um, we need a motion for the payroll. Move that the school committee approve payroll warrants number two and number four as presented. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? That would be unanimous. And gifts. No gifts, right? No gifts? No, okay. No gifts. Okay. Uh, chairman's comments are, are, are really quite brief. Uh, Doug and I and uh, Mr. Markham. Uh, met this morning with uh, the finance committee. Uh, to just to, as a as a kind of a, a kickoff meeting, I would call it. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody getting to know who all the players were. Uh, our, our new business administrator, uh, Christine Bufagna, came uh, to introduce herself and and get familiar with the process as well. I thought it was a pretty uh, well run meeting. Uh, we we all were have on the same page and uh, everything went well, very well. And uh, then the other thing I have is that uh, we're asking for a vote tonight just about the, uh, the Greenwood Roof project. Uh, MSBA would like to uh, you know, have something formal that uh, the, the funding is, is there for the uh, uh, project manager and the schematic design. Uh, we all know that, that the, the plan is that we're going to use money from the school department budget right now, and then uh, there's going to be a, a warrant on the, uh, the November town meeting to replenish that from the, from the town to, to put that back. But we need to commit that money uh, to stay on the accelerated track. So we have a, a, a motion, please. Okay. Resolved. Having convened in an open meeting on Tuesday, August 13th, 2019, the School Committee of Wakefield, Massachusetts, in accordance with its chapter bylaws and ordinances, has voted to authorize the Superintendent of Schools to utilize funds from the Extraordinary Maintenance Budget Line not to exceed $100,000 for the hiring of a Project Manager, OPM, and schematic design for the design and replacement of the Greenwood Elementary School roof. The roof replacement is part of the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program, ARP, for the Greenwood Elementary School located at 1030 Main Street, Wakefield, Massachusetts. Second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Motion's made and seconded. Uh, anything can unclear? A, can I sure. ask a quick question? Sure. So if it were not to pass 
at town meeting to get reimbursed, that just means we've got to figure out how to cover that hundred thousand dollars out of the budget. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm assuming that that's not going to be a problem, you know. And I think if and if it for whatever reason it didn't, um, we would have to cover that out of our budget. Okay. And you know, and I but think the chances of that are chances of that are slim. Yeah, slim I just wanted to, to understand. To what yeah. happens but so we right. take the risk by kind of putting it out there but so, kind of so the expectation is that we've been accepted into this program right and, and so the town is going to help fund it right and so we so what we're gaining by participating in the accelerated repair program is that the state will reimburse up to 50 percent of the cost of a new roof for the school so for the other remaining 50 percent the town has to put up those allocate that money right and so as part of that you know the first step one is just hiring a project manager and doing a schematic design which is basically just you know spe creating uh, specifics around you know they'll use a certain insulation mm -hmm. the scope of the work will include so it's it's kind of very specific um, and it's it's very common to the replacement of a roof right and so for, in order to go out to bid they need yeah, a schematic yeah, design yeah. so the project manager will oversee the schematic design they'll create the schematic design it will go out for bid and then we'll go from there and what happens at town meeting in the fall is not about that hundred thousand dollars it's actually about the half that we need to pay correct for the roof correct w of which right so some the, of that is that right so the time okay so in the fall they're not just voting <laughs> to, to replenish that. our hundred thousand yeah. they're voting to move forward with the participation of this grant which they've already kind of given us the the verbal that they would in fact support this mm -hmm. right okay yeah thank you I mean, for clarifying. Just, just as a note i think we've really made it clear that this is imperative you know that this particular um i think words have been used to the effect it's not connected you know to the rest of the building <laughs> kind of thing so <clears throat> and and not to mention um you know the leaks and and the real right. disruption to right. We're to, also, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt well, you. Well, the, the disruption to the educational process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other the other thing that we're exploring as well is the possibility of put, putting solar on the roof if it can carry the load, and so that's kind of a step into 2019, mm -hmm. right? Which is nice for the, a building of that age, right? Right. Yeah. Which would be good, if it, again, if it can sustain the load. But yeah. And that's that where we're Greenwood at. roof was included in the budget, right? Under the capital? No. No? No. Okay. It's, it's completely separate. Okay. So we wrote a statement of interest yeah. oh, and right. submitted that SOI to okay. MS to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Got it. And they we were entered into the grant mm -hmm. to replace that roof. Okay. So we've we're moving forward as part of the grant process. Great. Okay. Any other questions, comments? So the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Okay, that was a unanimous vote. Uh, and that is all I have. Great. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you so much. Um, I hope everyone is well. Just a gentle reminder to parents that school is, is coming. Our start date is September 5th, which is a Thursday. Uh, teachers will be in two days ahead of students on the 3rd and the 4th. Uh, so just a gentle reminder to to students and, and families just to hopefully the the summer work and summer reading is coming along um, and so if you need any supports there or you, you have any questions just get in touch with central office and we'll do our best to help out um, just some just some quick updates from me to the committee and to the community um, august 20th to the 22nd um, 2021 22 um, next week we're going to have our administrative retreat um, and that administrative real retreat will um, be for principals, assistant principals, assistance to the principals at the elementary level if they can attend, um, and also directors and coordinators. And so it is all of our instructional leadership group. Uh, the focus of, of those meetings will be to review our academic and instructional strategy, which focus on three parts, quality teaching, rigorous curri curriculum, and individualized student learning, um, which again align to how we create the budget. So you've heard those topics before. Um, so we're really going to drill down and, and discuss, you know, how to support uh, teachers and support uh, quality instruction. 
um, and really look at the materials that we're using as part of the WPS curriculum review cycle. And the third part, the individualized student learning is something that we've really spent a lot of time on in the last few years to work um, proactively and positively to support behavioral health um, and mental health of our students through counseling services and really just trying to weave in social emotional learning um, into everything we do. You know, one of the things that we are learning as we enter into this space is that when you hear things like trauma sensitive classrooms or social emotional needs of children, like those are not separate standalone items. You know, there are standards for those things, but they have to be woven into the academic programming and, and the, day, the daily programs for our students to be the most effective, right? They have to be part of the <laughs> academic program that, that students participate in. So we're gonna be doing a lot of work in that area. Uh, we're also going to have two presenters for professional development. We welcome the Associate Dean Raul Fernandez from Boston University, who's the Associate Dean for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Um, he'll be doing some professional development for our group, uh, our group of, of leaders. And we'll also, we also welcome um, our district's attorney in to do some legal uh, work and professional development with our group to best support um, the work that they're doing at the school level as well. So it's gonna be a full three days, and so, and we're looking forward to that. Um, I'd love to say that our quote unquote retreat is in you know, someplace tropical. It's at the Galvin. <laughs> and uh, it's really, really to accommodate, you know, staff and families who are dropping off that morning, but or for those days. But that's that's where we will be. So um, moving on, just a quick hiring update. Um, that we we do have a new director of food service. Uh, Kristen Morello has is leaving our district, and so um, this was a shared position. We had an intermunicipality agreement with Reading. And so we had a few of our administrators go over to Reading and be part of the interview process. Um, and we, with Reading, are moving forward um, to hire Gail um, Kutrabas from Andover, from the Andover Public Schools. So we're very excited to have her. It's, it's to have someone kind of that accomplished. Do you know her, Ann? I do. So um, that's great. So we'll, we're really fortunate to have her here. She's going to be starting in late September, and we're still working out that transition. So while, when we start school, we will um, be looking at, you know, having extra people come in to support in the, in the absence of, of the director until she gets here. So that's what's happening. We have a new director of Wakefield Academy, Estelle Burdick, who was a third grade teacher at Woodville. We're excited to have her. She has been, um, She's been working um, on, she's been a teacher leader, but she is also a certified administrator. We're excited to have her. We think she can kind of pick up the work of developing academic programming um, in our enrichment space in the Wakefield Academy as well. And so we're, we're fortunate to have her. We also welcome 22 new staff members to the district this year. And so those uh, within that 22 um, are you know, 6.5 positions that we have acquired through the budget. So those are new positions. And some of the positions are also because some people have been promoted. For example, Estelle Burdick has moved up and some other teachers have moved, moved up into positions um, that have opened up spots. But we welcome 22 um, new staff members this year. And so um, the Wakefield Public Schools induction program will be held on August 28th and 29th. Uh, that induction will be led by teacher leaders Liz Doucette and Allison Smith. It'll be a full two days. You know, a wrinkle this year that we're adding to the program is we're having diversity leaders come talk to new teachers as part of the induction. So I'm excited to see how that goes. I know I think students are excited um, to be part of that process and they feel um, honored to be asked. So we're looking forward to that. And, sorry, and yeah. Sorry program is it just the two days or does it span throughout say the first semester or year yeah so it starts with two days and then um, teachers are assigned mentors <coughs> mm -hmm. and that support for all new teachers and all new administrators will have a mentor so and that support that they receive 
will go throughout the school year. Okay. So there'll be formal meetings and also coupled with informal meetings where mentors will visit classes, they will invite their mentees to visit their classes, um, and they support in any number of spaces. Great. Yeah. So any other questions on that? Uh, I've got a question about the role that Estelle is taking with uh, Wakefield Academy. Yes. Is she also going to be doing any of the work that Matt Carter was doing around data? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so she is gonna cover yeah. both. Yeah, and so we had a, a meeting this morning um, with uh, Paul Minuti, who's our consultant who's been helping us with data. So uh, Matt Carter, myself, and Kara Morrow met this morning, and we talked to Paul about how we can um, how we can best support schools in their use and with use of data. Uh, but Paul will also be helping us roll out some MCAS information as soon as we as soon as that becomes available, um, and Estelle will be helping with that as well. Okay, great. Yeah. So just a, a quick facilities update. Um, we, on our, on our capital plan, if you recall, um, we had two big projects happening at, at Doyle, at our preschool. One was to install a new fire panel, which is complete. Um, the sprinkler system that um, we were looking to have put in in the summer required some additional testing. So they, we needed to confirm the water pressure from the street coming into the school, and that affects you know size of pipe, et cetera. So DPW is doing some additional testing, um, and I've talked to uh, members of DPW, and congratulations to Joe Conway, our new director of DPW. He's been in touch with me, and he has said, you know, Doug, we're gonna move that to the fall, and we'll get it done, and it will not interrupt teaching and learning or the program at Doyle in any way, shape, or form, and we will get that done as soon as we can. So that's what's happening there. Um, Galvin, just a very quick Galvin update in regard to the, the settling of the floor. So we are done part one of the drilling of corrugated piers, putting, putting piers down. Um, all of the kind of the core, coring that they've done is complete. They have put in um, new tile, and by the end of next week, they will go through a cleaning company. All the work, the construction will be done this Friday. And next week, a cleaning company will come in, not our custodians, will come in and take care of those rooms top to bottom. So after that, our teachers can get in on the following Monday, which is the 26th. That's what we're told right now. So um, also at the high school, so we've, we're doing a lot of tiling uh, and abatement work uh, for any asbestos tile that was in place. So we've had an abatement company come in, sale off areas, remove tile, and they're gonna be putting down new tile and they're completing cleaning. They're also replacing refrigerators and freezers in the cafeterias. And so uh, we're on schedule um, to get teachers in before the start of the school year so that they can get in their classrooms. And uh, that's, that's where we're at. I don't know if any anyone has any questions. Just when do you expect that the freezers and refrigerator um, projects will be finished yeah, before so, school starts? So, excuse me? Before school starts? There's no, it has to be before school starts. Okay. Um, because we need to be able to get food deliveries and cook and get food prepared for our, our students. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it's my understanding that it will be done by the 26th. So, and that's, that's the plan right now. So. Um, Doug, two questions, the sprinkler system at the Yep. same situation will be done before school starts the sprinkler will not be done it will not be done the sprinkler at Doyle will not be done before school starts more testing was required there yep so because of that um, they've just had to move out the the kind of the, the schedule of the work okay the fall, right the fall. the fall in the fall Correct. sorry I missed that that's okay um, and Galvin part one is part two next summer part one is done and part two is next summer that's so perfect. part one is kind of the the um, if you if you're facing Galvin, kind of the back corner, the back classrooms in the fifth grade wing, mm -hmm. is part one. Part two will be the main foyer and part of the library media center. Okay. Right. And the reason that they started with um, the classrooms first is because um, the other areas, kind of the finishes, are much different. And if there was, you know, if for example they tested and they needed to do more work, 
and had to put down and take up those finishes, it would have been a greater cost. And so they staggered the work. Um, they also didn't have enough time right. to do the whole project this summer. Yep. But they're going to monitor um, where the slab is um, through kind of laser measuring and laser testing to make sure that there's no more settling at this point in time. But yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. That's where we're at. Uh, I can tell you, bond construction um, has been amazing. Amazing compared to last summer. Um, and our our renovation and additions that we what we did at Walton and you know I know it's a larger company um, and and they're they're just different but um, they've been you know they've had an architect on site project manager there they are they are on it they are they're just really doing a nice job and uh, yeah and that's it that's it for me thank you for the time. Okay. <clears throat> Any um, thing to add? I, I I did mention this morning's meeting. I did fail to mention that Amy also was in attendance. It occurred to me after the fact. Was, you. When you start naming names, that's the the, the danger you run, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the uh, the the subcommittee, I will get off to a, a jumping start probably in more the end of September. Uh, give Christine a couple of weeks to get her feet wet. <laughs> Um, I spoke to Mr. Markham this morning, uh, uh, and there, he had nothing new to report on, on negotiations. Uh, anything with student services? So the uh, student services subcommittee met on August 1st, and um, it's a new subcommittee now with uh, myself, Ann, and Tom Flynn. So we just started the meeting with um, kind of giving an overview of what we did last year. Um, as a subcommittee, um, we talked about the surveys um, that were created and sent out to parents and teachers, um, specifically in regards to student transitions from four to five and eight to nine. Um, and then, you know, we just kind of had a discussion as to, you know, what we're thinking, um, you know, our next priorities might want, m what we might want to do. We haven't really nailed down an actual focus, but um, some of the things that we did discuss are, um, you know, focusing on implementation of the new programs and, um, you know, maybe trying to track whether, you know, the programs that we created are actually working and if they're making a difference um, because a lot of the work we did was a reflection in the budget of last year. Um, so we're thinking about possibly tracking that and um, we also thought maybe we or created some discussion about dyslexia and um, what our language-based program looks like in the K through 8 grade levels. So that should be a nice discussion um, in regards to dyslexia and kids with language-based <laughs> learning disabilities. Um, we also talked about counseling services and really how that looks um, in the district um, and really trying to create conversations about increased, like an increased focus on social, emotional, and mental health programs within the district. Um, and lastly, we discussed cultural competence. Um, wondering if maybe we could start creating conversations about creating awareness um, of, you know, one's cultural identity and views with diversity. So it was a great first meeting. We've got a lot of work to do, but um, I'm excited to continue on. And our next meeting is scheduled for August 19th. Okay. Thank you. And uh, policy and communications. Yep. So we had um, our first meeting on the 30th of July, um, 30th of July, Tuesday the 30th, and similar to your meeting, although we were all brand new to the committee, so it's Tom and Colleen and I met with Doug, and um, and so we spent a, a little bit of time just getting oriented to, um, you know, how has the group operated in the past, when might policies change. Um, you know, what are best practices around having the attorneys review policies. And so we really just kind of set the stage for what the, the, the committee would, what our purview might be. Um, and then the communications piece of that committee is relatively new. Um, so we talked a little bit about the role of the, um, the communications manager for the town of Wakefield and how she might support the school department kind of in general. Um, and um, then we talked more generally about the different ways the school committee might want to communicate, whether it be via the website or social media, and then what would we want to communicate. 
So we just kind of put a, a lot out there to start thinking about, kind of setting the stage for what future meetings and discussions might look like. Uh, we did have a couple of more specific items come up as part of the new business um, part of the agenda. Um, there were a couple of emails that had been received from um, staff and parents regarding our nut free environment policy and the social media, um, both social media as a, a curriculum tool and um, parents, and, uh, not parents, uh, volunteers and teachers posting pictures of social, and it's more volunteers, I shouldn't say teachers, volunteers posting pictures of students when they go in to volunteer in the classroom. So we got some, some feedback, and so that's kind of new business topics for future meetings. Um, so we have tentatively a meeting scheduled for um, the 27th of August, um, and I need to get that over to you, Judy, to uh, post officially. Um, so at six o'clock prior to our, our school committee meeting that evening, we're gonna be having a follow-up meeting that will talk about that new business, um, uh, those topics in, uh, in more depth and revisit kind of how, again, how, is, how do we wanna kind of attack policy at the highest levels and how do, what do we wanna do around communication? So we'll be meeting again in the next two weeks or in two weeks. Okay. Any further comments, future agenda items? I'm going to set a record here. Okay. Um, so our, our next uh, meeting will be uh, Tuesday, August 27th, just before the opening of school. Uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Uh, move that the school committee adjourn its meeting on August 13th, 2019. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Okay, the meeting is adjourned.